Okay, thank you everyone for joining us uh, today for, it'll be a podcast or a video cast, depending on how you're, you're viewing it. And this is gonna be a, a series of either four or five sections about, about Chrome. Uh, we have doctors who perform that consistently and one of them is with us today. That's, it's our guest, uh, Dr. James Hamill. He will insist I call him James. That's mm -hmm. how it works in Ireland and uh, UK as well, correct? Mostly, yeah. Mostly, yeah. Depends on who you're talking to. But for the most part, it's a first name basis. Uh, guided surgery, it's, uh, you know, in, in under two hours. So guided full art surgery is designed for safety, precision, quality results. You know, it's not a race. And whenever we talk about, you know, doing this under two hours, I always get the, hey, this is not a race. But, you know, when there's protocols in place, uh, there are benefits to two hour or less surgery uh, for, you know, the patient, for the practice, uh, you know, the patient's comfort, there's less anesthesia, team fatigue, patient fatigue, less bleeding. Uh, often, I mean, if you can do, you know, one and two, then you can do two and four, two and five. So you can do double arches much easier in one day. And there's a lot of other reasons. So, you know, why not shoot for less time? James has completed um, 55 arches solo and has taught uh, uh, more than a hundred doctors in one-on-one -on -one coaching surgeries all around Ireland and, uh, and UK. And that's, that's really impressive. And he completes all of his arches, all of them in under two hours. And one thing that's, and, I, and I'm going to turn this over in just a second here, but one thing that really struck me during um, our surgery is when James said uh, patient management, patient management is uh, often key to um, being able to follow his protocol and get the patient to buy in what's going on. And, and that's really what, what helps contribute to the, to the efficiency and speed of these cases. Now, so patient management, it means a few things. And I, but with you, Doctor, with, with you, James, I mean, it starts from the beginning yep. with the patient. First of all, thank you, Alan, for having me on the podcast. I hope I can add some value somewhere along the line in the next few videos. Um, but yeah, patient management starts right from the very first contact really you have with that patient, even if that's your receptionist or your team or your treatment coordinator, even looking on your website, that's the very first time that you can have an influence on the management of that person. Um, and then really during your first consultation, and as I've said to you, I, I, it's not about sugar coating it. It's not about trying to hide things. It's about having an honest conversation importantly in a language that they understand and one of the big things that i like to do is i like to say to them listen you are part of this you know you're going to help me and i'm going to help you and in doing that just that very simple thing they understand that they're actively going to be part of this journey so they're not i don't use sedation I, i've never used sedation for a chrome case in any of the ones that i've done and I just don't feel there's a need to do it if your patient management skills are up to scratch. For me, that, that's purely about communication. It's about having that conversation with them right at the very beginning about what they're going to what's going to happen stage by stage. Hmm. And one of the, you, you've seen me do it, but um, I, I will tell them that, listen, you know, part of this process may get difficult. Part of this process... I need you to help me. So therefore I need you to dig in. And I'll tell them that and say, you're, you're going to have to dig in for maybe 10 seconds for me. Maybe it's going to be tender. Maybe there's going to be a little bit of vibration and a bit of annoyance for them. But if they work hard for me, I'll work hard for them and I'll get them out the door in less than two hours. Hmm. And so it's that goal of being able to take them along the journey with you and, um, you know, rather than putting them in the chair, sedating them, letting them go off and then having to manage sometimes the difficulties that can occur during that process. So wow. I find that it's, it's a two way thing. Uh, that's what I tell them right from the off. And I've always done my generally always done my dentistry like that. Uh, and it's, it's worked very, very well. Hmm. I noticed that uh, in the surgery with Jimmy, mm -hmm. he's, he's his first name, but he, um, you know, he got into a couple of difficult spells yeah. when, when I think mostly, I mean, he had some tough teeth to pull. Yeah. That was difficult, but that was just a little bit of pressure. I think when the implants were being inserted, a couple of them, he was, you know, kind of leaning back in the chair and having some pain, but instead of stopping, waiting five minutes, 10 minutes for, for some more anesthetic, 
you talked him through it. He, yeah. he buckled yeah. down and you, you put the implants in. Yeah. And it's not about being cruel. You know, I, I, you know, my job is to make them as comfortable as I can make them. But the unknown in all of this, you know, we know Chrome is very predictable and, and, and that makes all of that brilliant. But the unknown of this is how is the patient going to react? We really don't know that when, until you put them in that situation. So yeah. you got to be on your feet. You got to be aware. You got to listen to what they're telling you. And they've also got to listen to what you're telling them. And with Jimmy, you know, there was a good bit of bleeding, which is going generally makes the anesthesia more challenging, especially when you're dealing potentially with infected sockets and that type of thing. You've soft tissue tags and those can be a little bit more difficult to, to anesthetize. So I could have spent 20 minutes fiddling about with, with him trying to get these little tiny areas numb. When actually the conversation that I've had with him preoperatively is I will have said, so this isn't, a, this wasn't a surprise to him and that's the key to it. Mm. Is that I will say, listen, Jimmy, we, we will find ourselves likely in a situation where this is going to be a bit uncomfortable. And we've got two choices. One choice is that I spend another five, 10, 15 minutes trying to get you numb. And I may not be able to get that one little bit sufficiently anesthetized for you, or you hang in, you hold tight, and it'll be over in five to 10 seconds. Hmm. And quite often the patient will say, you know what, James, just go on ahead with it. I trust you that it will only last for that length of time. Hmm. And, and that's what we did with Jimmy on that particular day. And that happens, so it doesn't happen all the time. Some of these cases you can go through hardly without topping up the local, but it is that patient factor that, that you don't, that you can't predict. Right, right. And and not all patients are the Jimmys of the world too. Some just will not continue, you know, with all the prepping in the world, they're not going to go on without more anesthesia, but yeah. If, yeah. But, but there's a chance with expectations of preparation, I suppose that's, that can get you through it, get both of you through it. Uh, absolutely. I'll probably yeah. say to you, I've never had a patient requiring to stop treatment. Hmm. Uh, you know, Yes, okay, they can put their hand up. You give them a get out clause. Another one is, listen, if you need me to stop, you let me know and I will stop. We'll have a chat and then we'll sort it out and we'll move on. Oh, okay. But, but okay. you got to keep it moving, Alan. You have to keep it moving, right? Just yeah, like our podcast, right? You got to keep moving. And, and, I, and I noticed that with, um, with, with the surgery and that was, you know, in, in, in Ireland, they're not assistants, they're nurses. And the, the nurse that you had, uh, you had, you had two, but really one main one who had a tremendous amount of experience. She knew what to hand you. And that's, that was the next thing we were going to talk about is a really uh, well-trained staff. You know, part of that is, yes, they're a surgical tech. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a must, you know, with yeah. a lot of surgery experience. But, um, but part of it is also knowing what tool to hand you. You know, that, that not just part of the, not just the, the normal tools, but the guided kit. I mean, yeah, the team. So, yeah, your, 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 your team have got to be really well trained. And ultimately that boils down to, to me to train them. Now, that particular nurse and the nurse that I work with is, is very experienced surgically. She also has very good patient management skills. And I, when I go around chair side, I see a lot of the patient management just being left up to the dentist and the nurse stands without really interacting that that's a huge letdown because yeah, the nurse too. the nurse can add so much value in terms of patient management hand on the shoulder you're okay james james knows exactly what's going on here we've talked about this before is everything okay because sometimes that's a little get out clause for the patient to turn to the nurse because yeah. that's maybe a safety zone for them and so the nurse has to have patient management skills as well alan then there's the technical bit, which is knowing where to place the suction, um, how to stop the patient if they're going to gag, all these wee things. Those are just the technical bits of nursing. And then you've got the knowledge of the kit. Absolutely vital if you're going to keep your time down and make it as efficient as possible. Basically, you want to stand there and the only place your hands go are within about a the half 35 or 30 centimeter radius of where you're working, everything should come into your hand. Yep. And if your nurse knows the steps and knows the language, and that's important is the language of Chrome. So what's a fixation base, what's a carrier guide, all those things. 
then you can really start to motor. For me, I would say if I could go around and see a really good surgeon who's really very slick, but that, in, that connection with his nurse will lose them about 45 minutes. Mm. And it can be as much, of, much as that. Simply right. having the packets open. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll get to some, some of that, uh, some of that a little bit later, but some of that, some of that is just having the, the, the materials, uh, whatever it is prepared, ready to hand you and knowing which one comes next. You know, some of that is uh, the, the, the nurse or the assistant watching the videos, learning the flow. There are, um, there's 30 videos available between the websites, your website, our website, the YouTube. They should watch them. They should know the flow. They should know the terms, the names of the components, the names of all the components in the kit. Uh, I, I see a lot of fussing around with, um, with guided kits, with um, sometimes pulling three or four kits out looking for the right tool that should have been on the table that morning, the night before. So it's, it's, a, it's a major headache for, um, you know, for, for everyone. Yeah. I, I also think part of it is knowing it, but part of it is kind of backing up the doctor too. I mean, it's a, it's a stressful surgery. So if something is pulled out of the kit wrong in the wrong order, you know, the, the, the nurse or the assistant can correct them. So that coordination is just key. And I see the most efficient offices, the doctor's hand goes out and something goes in the hand. And yeah. sometimes it's just repeat, repeat, repeat until it's, until it's finished. Really important staff training. I, th I think a word I would also add in there, Alan, is permission. And by that, mm -hmm. I mean permission for the nurse to do it. Right. Um, because a, a lot of surgeons are total control freaks. Okay, they want to control everything. All right, but and and sometimes that's in that's in their detriment. And really, you know, as what I've always known that, but it's become acute. I've seen it so much now, out and about and traveling. But permission to allow your nurse to help you, permission to allow your nurse to be involved in the surgery, and I think then the nurse feels more comfortable to be involved. And, and totally and agree. Think, yeah, totally agree. I. Because so, you'll you'll go into an office and everybody in in there is like a mouse, yeah. No, no one talking, no one doing anything unless a doctor instructs. And if you've been in that environment in dental or medical, it's it's often the the team, the support team that that has just as much knowledge about a lot of those things going on as a doctor. Not, you know, I don't want that's not not often fair to say that, but if they have experience and and it's uh, a lot of this is routine. I mean, most of this is routine. Yeah, on these types of surgeries, there's surprises, but there's routine, and the staff can be there to back you up if they're allowed to. Yeah, that's a really great point. I, I think also, Alan, it's have con, you know, and I suppose not for everybody, but it's important to be to have the communication whilst you're working. So I have a habit of I talk myself through it. So even if I, um, even if I wasn't teaching it or anything. I, I will talk myself through it and that keeps me in the flow, but it also keeps the nurse aware of, of, cause she might lose distraction for a couple of minutes. You know, what's coming up next. Okay. This mm. is what I know. And it's okay just to keep that little trickle of information. And when we go back to the patient, my patients will be told that that's what will happen. Some of them say, Oh, I do want to know anything, which mm. is okay. But I'll yeah. say, well, I'm still going to have some form of narrative as I go through because it helps us as a team make sure that we're helping you as the patient. Hmm. So I think silence is not a good place to be. Um, and some people will play music and that's fine. But I think a little narrative does help. Verbalize the whole protocol, verbalize the process. Yeah, terrific. Terrific. And then, uh, so that's a nice summary for this section. You verbalize it and then the team's on the same page, the patient's on the same page and, uh, and off you go to a efficient um, start of a surgery. Totally. Okay. All right. 